Welcome back. I don't know about you, I'm always a sucker for productivity lists, like those lists that you come across online, the best productivity apps you can find in whatever year it is. And while this video might end up coming off a little bit like that, what I appreciate about what these lists usually offer is recommendations of apps and services that you can use to use your computer more efficiently, use your time more productively, all of that kind of thing. And I often think to myself, it seems a shame that most of these lists are making recommendations of proprietary software that runs on either Mac or Windows. And so what I want to try and do in this video is offer some suggestions as to things that I've found success with over the last decade or so of using Linux, because productivity apps on Linux have actually come a long way. But what I want to do today is break down the, the like building an alternative productivity suite on Linux. Now, this makes a few assumptions and we'll get into that as we get into the video, but it encompasses this is a few areas. First of all, I want to give some recommendations about all in ones. These are kind of like the bits of software that you can use that encompass a lot of what you need in a productivity suite under one roof, more or less. But I also want to offer some suggestions about how we can use the individual pieces of a productivity suite and give recommendations for one app, one job type thing. So this would include, for example, task management, a calendar, email, RSS feeds, notes, cloud storage, and an office suite. And all those things combined, I think, can give a pretty potent productivity stack for getting stuff done. So without further ado, here is some suggestions for building the ultimate productivity suite on Linux. So to start us off with, the all-in-ones. These are the pieces of software that we can recommend that cover a lot of the bases out of the box. I'm gonna start with an old veteran, which is Thunderbird. Now, while Thunderbird has undergone a huge UI redesign recently, Thunderbird was always very extensible when it comes to how you can use this piece of software to help manage your digital life. And so while this software is great for email and we'll get back to that, it also has really functional calendar software that you can synchronize with your online calendar providers. And it has task management, although it's a little rudimentary, but it's still good. And you can add other things through extensions to Thunderbird as well. Thunderbird is probably one of the most venerable pieces of software on this list, so it gets better from here. When we talk about uh, all-in-one productivity, it's hard to go past evolution as the default productivity suite for the GNOME desktop. You can synchronize this through, uh, again, through an extra little plugin with a lot of the Microsoft ecosystem. So if you use Office 365 or, or, or Microsoft Exchange, you can often get these talking fairly well. And I have had success in the past with calendar invites and syncing those so that you can actually interact with calendar invitations from your email and that kind of thing. So Evolution is a decent all-in-one suite, although I wouldn't rate it particularly highly in terms of uh, user interface or user experience design. It's fair, but it's not amazing. I also recognize that a lot of people are gonna rec uh, recommend Nextcloud as a great all-in-one productivity suite, and I, I I use this as a loose recommendation because at the end of the day, setting up your own Nextcloud system, including email, calendar, and notes, and all that kind of thing, is a fair bit of work on the front end because of the fact you have to have your own server, you have to, um, you either have to rent that space on someone else's server or have it on your own, and it does take a little bit of setting up. And it also, while it really helps with collaboration, uh, not everyone needs the kind of power that something like Nextcloud as an all-in-one productivity suite and more can offer. So those are my all-in-one recommendations. Let's get into the individual ones. First of all, let's talk about task management. I'm gonna give simple recommendation, the more uh, advanced one or the one that has more features. And then I'll also mention a proprietary one or one that ties in with proprietary software or services well. So the simple one is uh, Endeavor. Endeavor is the default kind of GTK GNOME task list manager. Uh, and it's very simple. It does what it says on the tin. In terms of a simple task management uh, situation that's getting regularly updated, it's got smooth animations, integrates well the desktop, Endeavor is the way to go. If you're looking for something with a few more features, getting things GNOME or getting things GNOME, however you want to put that, has been around for a really long time. Uh, it relies on a specific method of productivity and task management, which has been around for some time as well. However, this app did get picked back up in around 2020, and I believe it is still being actively uh, developed. So again, it does have a pretty extensible library of plugins, and you can synchronize this across multiple platforms. Uh, but if you're looking for something that ties in really well with uh, proprietary options, 
For example, you can go ahead and install Todoist from the FlatHub, uh, from FlatHub, uh, and you can use that proprietary app and service on your Linux desktop these days, which is, I think, kind of cool in and of itself. But if you're wanting to use an open source front end for Todoist, then I would recommend, or I would have recommend using Planner. Now, I personally love this little bit of software. Uh, it, it came as a recommendation to me a number of years ago, and it's gone through some pretty significant redesign since. It used to be very much associated and tied to the elementary desktop in its uh, in its app store, but it's since branched out and been made available on FlatHub. It's also available under the name Planify, and I don't know what the difference is between Planner and Planify. They both look exactly the same from where I'm standing. Uh, but this piece of software, apart from being really well designed, has uh, the ability to synchronize with Todoist, which I think leaves it a, uh, a step above in terms of if you already have or you're already invested in the Todoist ecosystem and you just want to have something that looks and works really well on Linux, then Planner is a great way to go. There have been quite a few reports though of some significant bugs that have yet to be squashed in the latest version of Planner. So I'd urge a little bit of caution there and maybe there's might be something going on between Planner and Planify. I'm not really sure there, but the recommendation still stands. It's worth checking out as you build out your ultimate productivity suite on Linux. That leads me on to talk about calendars. When it comes to calendars, again, the simple version is the built-in version that comes with GNOME. You can, through the online accounts that's available through uh, GNOME and through Cinnamon in my case, uh, you can sync this up with your other online calendars. Sometimes it can be a bit finicky though, and, uh, and you really have to double check that you're getting the, the two-way synchronization. Now, if you're dealing with like email invites and all that kind of thing, you can forget it. You really have to be dealing with either Thunderbird or Evolution at that point. However, I do have a recommendation for a calendar that, uh, that recently has been impressing me, and that is Morgan. Uh, Morgan is a proprietary bit of software, but it integrates both task management and calendars in online service form. So for example, if you have like Microsoft To Do or Todoist and you have a calendar with Google Calendar or something like that, it creates a platform where you can uh, interface between the two and assign things that are on your task list to specific spots on your calendar. And then you can sync that with you know all of your other devices and both mobile and desktop. Uh, so the beauty of this is that while you do get a fully functional calendar, you also get a few nice bits and bobs here, including available slots and also uh, a sort of an AI assist that can help you plug in tasks that are on your to-do list into free spots on your calendar to try and block out your time a little more effectively. I think if we're dealing idealistically, this app is obviously not open source. And so while uh, there might be some of you watching this that that's a deal breaker, there are gonna be plenty of you that just want a functional calendar. Well, Morgan I think can step in really well as long as you don't have too many accounts to play with. It is free as in you can start using it and get most of the functionality out of it for a limited amount of accounts. But if you start dealing with like a lot of accounts or a lot of different task list providers, then you do need to fork out a subscription. But definitely go ahead and give it a go. Morgan is available on the Snap Store as well as in Deb and RPM packages from their website. So go and check out Morgan because I think it's probably one of the best, most functional calendars, a little bit like Fantastical um, on the Mac side of things uh, that I've come across in some time. So moving on from there, uh, let's talk about email because at the end of the day, most of us still have to manage a lot of email. Um, my go-to email client for some time now has been Geary, just because of how uh, simple and functional it is. It does one job and that's email and it does it for one account, which it seems to work really well. And uh, it's very lightweight and it looks native on my desktop, which is basically all I need it to be. If you do need more features than this, like you need um, more advanced inbox uh, or folder management, you wanna be able to create and delete folders for your email, you wanna be able to uh, set specific flags or do all that kind of thing, then I'm definitely gonna go back to my recommendation for Thunderbird. There is still a fair bit of criticism, uh, even though Thunderbird has received a significant uh, interface overhaul, and I think the fact that you can very easily customize Thunderbird to look the way that you want it to, uh, with density settings, font sizes, all that kind of thing, the layout of it. Uh, this still has the most features that you'll be able to find as an open source email client. However, my recommendation also still stands for Mailspring. 
as Mailspring is also an open source email client, the difficulty is, is that it doesn't have the same level of interoperability between email and calendar. And for some people, again, that's a deal breaker. But in my case anyway, I used Mailspring for a long, long time. And you don't actually need to uh, have a Mailspring ID or sign in through any of the uh, stuff that they mentioned here. You can just sign in with your basic account details and set up your inbox that way. So I'm gonna log in. You can finish the setup without having to subscribe. Subscribing is a good way to support the project, obviously. But as I've recommended before, Mailspring still offers a really modern looking uh, email client with a lot of really helpful features. The drawback is doesn't have the interoperability with the calendar, uh, but it also, I've had more success with Mailspring connecting to uh, more tricky or enterprise email setups. So like Office 365 and stuff like that. I had more success with that than other email clients on this list. So moving on, I really only have one recommendation for RSS feeds and RSS feeds are just a great productive way to manage the input of content that you might want or be interested in. So if you have a websites that you like to follow or if you have YouTube channels that you want to subscribe to without dealing with YouTube itself, then RSS is a great way to manage that. Uh, Newsflash is a fantastic uh, GTK4 uh, RSS app that you can find on Flathub that syncs with a lot of the services that we use to manage our RSS feeds these days. Notably, Feedly is missing, but that's due to an update to their API that they put out in 2021. Prior to that, they did also support Feedly. So if you are using one of these particular services already and you just wanna sync it up with this client, you can, or if you just wanna add local RSS feeds to this one client locally on your install, then you can do that as well. Now let's talk about Notes. Notes is a contentious one, so again, I'm gonna split it up into categories of a simple one and then on to more advanced stuff depending on your use case. So I'll try and get through these as quickly as possible. My go-to note taking has always been Simple Note for the simple stuff. Uh, simple Note is it's been around forever and uh, and it has very solid synchronization and it's available on many many platforms uh, and it's just very simple it's text-based you can use Markdown if you really want to um, but at the end of the day it just syncs text. Uh, if you want to go a little bit more advanced than that, if you want something a little bit more like Evernote, then my recommendation is Joplin. Joplin is very similar to Evernote or OneNote in that it uses a what you see is what you get type editor. You can use a markdown editor if you want, uh, but the flexibility and customizability and uh, expandability of Joplin is really impressive. And the fact that you can also set it up to sync either with a cloud service that you already have or to sync through their own synchronization service. Although I have heard reports of their sync service being a little janky from time to time. But chances are, if you have a clear structure, both with notebooks and the pages within those notebooks, uh, then you'll have a pretty good chance at keeping this thing under control. Uh, so Joplin has been around for some time and it has gotten significantly better in the last two or three years. So if you have not tried Joplin out, even if you're running Mac or Windows already, then go and give it a go because at the end of the day, uh, it is a very powerful note-taking tool and it offers a lot of features like web clipping and all of that fun stuff. And the ability to import and export stuff is also really good. Now, if you're looking for something that is more, um, it, it is more a large repository of information, then Obsidian is something that has gained a lot of ground in the last few years. Uh, when it comes to uh, what Obsidian does, it is a note taker and a text uh, sort of amalgamation tool where if you are writing a lot of information and you need to be able to find and make connections between those individual notes and uh, sort of set up a fairly intricate database situation. Um, so this could be very useful if you're studying and you have a lot of interconnected uh, notes or if you're working on a long form project where there are a lot of uh, individual chapters or components that you're working on that need to be able to see, you need to be able to visualize the connection between them. Obsidian is a very, very uh, flexible tool. While it is still technically note taking, the amount of crazy things that people have done with Obsidian is very similar to something like Notion. It's not exactly the same and people get upset with the comparison between the two, but the amount of plugins that this thing can take from the community is very impressive. And so again, there's plenty of videos out there talking about how to use Obsidian to the max. 
I personally haven't used it, but I keep seeing it everywhere I look when it comes to productivity software. So I thought I'd give it a mention here. When it comes to the things that I'm more familiar with, Trillium Notes is also very similar to Evernote and it has a very uh, similar tree fo uh, file folder structure. Um, while I'm not as big of a fan of the UI here as what uh, I am of like Joplin due to its similarities to like early versions of Evernote, uh, I, I can still respect what Trillium does here. And again, it's one of those pieces of software that is free to use. Uh, although if you want to scale up its functionality and uh, all the features that it can synchronize with and all that kind of thing, uh, then there are paid options available. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a great tool that has a lot of helpful templates out of the box to get you note taking in a way that makes sense to you. And finally, my recommendation for any like PDF annotations or handwritten notes that you might wanna make, while there are other options out there that are in development fairly actively, um, this space is a bit of a new space when it comes to Linux apps um, due to the fact that, I mean, Linux stylus support was always a little bit touch and go depending on the manufacturer. Zernal++ has been in this space for quite some time and they've been making uh, a great tool for annotating PDFs, but also being able to um, very similar annotation kind of style to something like GoodNotes, although it's not nearly as polished as that. And funnily enough, I can't even open it. And just quickly, I'll give three recommendations when it comes to cloud storage. Uh, pCloud, I think, is still a very valid recommendation for a lot of privacy-oriented users. Again, when it comes to cloud storage, there are a lot of privacy concerns around some of the biggest ones out there, OneDrive, Google Drive, etc. cetera. Um, but the ones that seem to have a modicum of respect for privacy, as well as decent value for money when it comes to storage would be pCloud. Uh, again, these are all available on Linux. Ice Drive, um, again, just a, a newer player in the game, um, but also fairly generous when it comes to the free offerings and fair pricing when it comes to the uh, paid ones and Mega. Um, all of these are uh, decent and have really great customizable uh, synchronization clients for uh, the Linux desktop. So if you're looking for like a backbone to store a lot of your data, um, I'm always gonna advocate for like self-hosted stuff. Um, and so for me, I run like a, a network attached storage setup and that works really well for me. But if you're looking for something uh, that's a little more consumer facing, then uh, definitely check out one of those. And finally, Office Suites, look, there's kind of very little I, I have to contribute here, apart, to, apart from the fact to say the most venerable and customizable uh, and capable open source Office Suite that we have is LibreOffice, for better or for worse. While you can very easily customize the UI these days to uh, something that's a little more reminiscent to Microsoft Office, it is worth mentioning that it doesn't have the best compatibility when it comes to Microsoft documents. While you can tweak things like fonts and you can install Microsoft fonts, or at least some of the early ones, you are gonna get better compatibility and rendering of Microsoft documents if you use uh, only Office, WPS Office or SoftMaker Office. Um, all of these are, uh, only Office is open source, but WPS Office and SoftMaker Office are not open source. And so while they make their software uh, available on Linux, uh, there are some limitations as to which, as to what functionality they have for their free version. So the recommendation is if you have to deal with Microsoft Office documents on the daily, and those have sophisticated formatting, then use something like WPS Office or SoftMaker Office to get that compatibility straight. Uh, but if you are the one creating documents or you need more customization and um, better tools to be able to create your documents with, then LibreOffice is probably gonna be your best bet. Or just stick to the online ones that come bundled with either Google's ecosystem or Microsoft's one, because those tools exist and most of us use those anyway. So that's the exhaustive list of how to build a pretty decent productivity stack on the Linux desktop. Hope this was helpful. I'll see you all in the next one.